You've worked with Gillingham before, of course. We were at the Board of Trade together for a time. Thank you. When he was seconded from Imperial Engineering. I'm never sure whether he's still a tycoon or now one of you. Cross-fertilization, Sir John. It's healthy. When the minister made you chairman, Bob, I could see the gloves coming off. When you brought in Kemp for Townley, I thought I also saw the claws. Your trouble, Caswell, is you have a cartoonist's view of public life. Visual but unsubtle. All the same. Oh, thank you. It's not been lost on Fleet Street. All on those MPs were alarmed at the prospect of this board going for extra powers. And note the warning. And see it as a friendly one? Oh, most friendly one. Will you excuse me a minute? Did you notice how many times they both ignored calls to the phone during the meeting? Yeah. I made it a draw, three more. Give thanks you're not a bank businessman. There's one thing. If it's bad news, they've both got it. He ought to have been a mountain. When Straker said his mind on something, watch out. He's a human fire engine. You have to move. Not me. No, we wait till Ken gets back. He's clearly worried about the North African project. And that's your son's patch of concrete. I thought Ken was due back yesterday. The day before, he evidently heard what was brewing up and has hidden his head in the Sahara. <laughs> well, I suppose one of us had better call Straker. Please telephone Mr. Straker, most urgent. Please call Mr. Straker before 11. Mm. It's like being on a distress frequency with somebody screaming Mayday every 11 minutes. Yes, he'll be sending the postmaster general round in person next. Mm, the streak has rattled, he'll have good reason. Caswell, this is Kenneth's problem. Oh, we're in partnership with Straker. Yes, and he's flapping because your son's in charge. Who isn't? Well, you kept him on it. He's joint managing director with appropriate salary and expenses. You also sent him abroad to review the project. Or rather, you sent him abroad to get him out of your way while you're preoccupied here with the NEB. Look, when I regard your son as serious competition, then I know crepitation has set in. You ring Straker. Very well. When did you say my son was due back? For all I know, he's living it up in some harem. Not interrupting your work again. I know, it's five down, isn't it? You've been looking. Uh, six letters, isn't it? No, seven. Oh dear. I must need glasses. You don't? Of course you don't. Go on, what's the clue? Frowning with menace. Frowning with menace. How many letters? Seven. Mm, wild as only six. Shall I tell you? Please. Lowering. That's it. Must be lowering. You're much cleverer than you pretend, aren't you? If, if my son's to blame, Billy, I'll see that uh, I'll see that you don't suffer. Well, well there's no point. He's, he's not back yet. No, no, no. We 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 don't know when. Wilder. Oh yes, yes, he's here. Well, I'll see what he says. I'll ring you back in half an hour. How is Madge? Fine. Fine. Be assured, John, nobody's going to rush either you or Caswell off this board. The minister's reluctant to see that any real difficulty is being created anyway. But not you. If only you hadn't gone to Bly's. Two out of three industrialist members of this board from the same firm. Still, I've been here less than three weeks. Spoken like the true politician. To you, normally three days would have appeared dilatory. A new chairman, John, should avoid the new broom look. It smacks of the caretaker. And caretakers in politics, individuals or governments, aren't meant to stay. Doubtless when he's settled in, Kemp will have some ideas. As I've heard you approved of his ideas. But I thought he was secretary to this board, not its kingmaker. Well, never underrate the civil servant. John, he's entitled to his views. He's put his finger on the need to expand this board to cope with extra committee work to around 15 members. Will the minister agree? He might with me, if not with Kemp. <laughs> like you, John. He thinks civil servants should keep their proper place. And so must I. I should have been at the Treasury five minutes ago. You'll be in the club this evening. 
hour or so. Twenty minutes will be enough. Sefton? Bye, Bob. Well, if you were trying to see his hand over the matter of our dual membership, I could have told you you were wasting your time. And you're about to waste some more. I'll see you tomorrow, Caswell. You'll see me before then. Hmm? Four this afternoon. If you mean Straker, then he'll have to take his place in the queue. More fool you. I don't know whether he was deliberately trying to make us bloody stupid this afternoon at the meeting with all these messages being sent in, but he nearly succeeded. He's an ill-mannered windbag. And our partner in North Africa. Our minority partner. You saw to that before I ever joined Lies. I shall also see that he gets a square D now that you have. You should be on, Woodsman. No, oh, I mean it. You know, this project is sinking deep in the red. You launched it. You're aboard. The world knows you're running Blythe. What about this son of yours? He'll have to fend for himself. And so will you. Get me my office. Casual Bly. Miss Tilling's head. Uh, uh, contact my son and see that he's told to return home immediately. Uh, my uh, daughter-in-law might know where he is. Try anybody. Contact the project manager in North Africa. But I want Master Kenneth here. Quickly. Did you look at those? Well, clearly you don't. Flight bulletins are a bore. They're all the same. I could say it off by heart. Oh, really? I, I would have moved you, sir, but before. Oh, that's all right, don't worry. Thank you. Yes. Height? Hmm? Well, how high? 22,000 feet. Speed? 550 miles per hour. Hmm, near enough. Um, captain's name? Oh, no, that's unfair. Captain's name? They're nearly always called Jones. Well, it's O'Reilly. With Kenneth's safety in mind, find out what Straker's up to, whether he's got real figures, a case, or not. If he hasn't, fine. If he has... If he has, the uh, execution priorities are reversed. Ken, first for the chop in place of Claswell. You're getting cynical, Don. You'd better watch it. You stick to research. Leave the judgments to me. And if Straker insists on your being at the meeting? Insists? Just tell him I have a more pressing appointment. Which I have. I don't quite understand why the minister has thought fit not to choose between them yet. You'll have to soon, or his successor will. Or you can make of that what you like, Sefton. They can turn Blyze into a bull ring if they like, but not this place. We might arrange in future that only really urgent messages are brought in during a meeting of the full board. I'm sure none of those Sir John and Mr Bly received today were. I'd say they were very urgent. Sir John and Caswell were determined to show us how single-minded they were in not being deflected from the board's business. Come in. The notification summary you asked for. Thank you, Miss Weldon. Uh, there are two steps, actually. This uh, one Thank you, Miss Weldon. I quite understand. And the information you wanted about individual company failures to notify... Later, Miss Weldon. Is where, Miss Weldon? Section two. Ah, oh, yes, and section three is your follow-up inquiries. Uh, director's explanations for failures to notify. Or excuses? Both. Good. You have been busy, Sefton. I take it we can expect from you a thoroughgoing memorandum on our need for extra powers. Only if the situation seriously warrants. And you, Miss Weldon. What is your view? On our going for compulsory powers? I think you'd lose all your friends in the business world, Mr. Dillingham. I take it you have no objection to a working lunch, Miss Weldon? Oh, none at all. I'd enjoy it. One o'clock, then? As long as I know in advance. Good. But today, I'm committed for lunch. Non-working. What do you mean, Rome? What the hell's he doing there? Well, he's on the Rome-London flight. That's all I know, except that he left North Africa two days ago. Going where? Rome. You should express yourself more clearly, Donald. What time is it due? 
2.30. I left a message. Well, meet him. I want him at Bly's by four o'clock. You'll be pretty whack, John. Well, that's his lookout. Whether he's suffering from sunburn, heat stroke, or whatever he's picked up out there. You just produce the body. Goodbye, Donald. All right, don't explain. Kemp kept you. He nearly took me to lunch. Nearly? I said no. Why should he want to lunch you? Research. Not so much into exports, I fancy, as privacy. Yours? Ours. Why should he want to drag all that up? I'm surprised you haven't asked me yet about the background to Sefton Kemp's transfer. I don't expect you to sing for your supper, or even your lunch. Or have you found out anyway? He builds empires. And he thinks a national export board without compulsory powers is like a boxer with no hands. He has a weakness for pugilistic simile and for equating the voluntary with the ineffective. He works to Gillingham, and I know Bob Gillingham. Who also knows Sefton Kemp and pulled every string to get him. You mean what Kemp wants is what Gillingham wants? No, I mean what Kemp wants is what Gillingham might have to go for. I had no idea you were so involved in public policy. It's not public policy, John. Most personal. Gemp loathes competition, and that's what I am. As soon as it's convenient, he's going to try and get me transferred. And then... So if you're going to say what I think you are, don't. It's true. I've told you. If you were a thousand miles away from the export board, or any of my other interests, it wouldn't make any difference. We'd still meet as often. Mm-hmm. I'm a coward, John. I'm not prepared to take the risk. You might have to if they drop me from the board. Oh, they won't do that. So you want me to help to shift Kemp before he shifts you? I'm sure he wants to. Something tells me. Did he tell you? Well, he might have done if I'd gone to lunch. Well, then you should have done. I prefer your restaurants. You're seeing him at four, anyway. No, I've cancelled. I've got to be at Bly's. How you survive all these crossed lines, I'll never know. Sorry, Bly's is enough for one day. Well, one of them is. I didn't know his son would be running the job, did I? Not when we signed. Oh, he has a marvelous talent for undercosting your Ken, which is mad at the best of times. And bloody mad on a fixed price tender like this. May as well scatter tenors of the desert. You agreed the partnership, Ken or no Ken. Having been deafened by false promises. You hear what you choose to hear. Yes, well, I've got eyes as well. And I see a 600,000 pound profit turning into a 600,000 pound loss. And nearly half of it mine. Whose figures are they? Never you mind, but they're accurate. If that wandering son of yours had had the guts to show his face, he'd have to agree. What, uh, <clears throat> what do you want us to do about it, Billy? Well, I have no intention of chucking good money after bad. Well, we've no intention of being obstructive. Speak for yourself, Caswell. Yes? Reception have just rung to say that Mr. Kenneth Bly and Mr. Henderson have arrived and are on their way up. See that they're shown straight into here, will you? Evidently, he's wandering in the right direction. This is still Bly's, Cass, I take it. And will be for a long time yet. Ah, welcome home, Kenneth. I'm afraid we've run out of ticker tape. You look rather like a Senate investigating committee. I trust you found Rome to your liking? Hello, brother. Well, it was... Restful. You look as if you could do with a break in the Mediterranean yourself, Billy. He feels that we could all do with one in North Africa. Oh. 
He's anxious about our mutual prospects there. Oh, and so he should be, with 49% interest. Then a £600,000 loss. Mm. Desert does give up its secrets. Now, if you're pleading not guilty, you'll save your breath. Then good afternoon. Now, hold on, Ken. You're not ducking this one. It's the air of panic. Not conducive to clear thought. Panic! Here you are with a half million pound loss on our hands, and you talk a clear thinking. The great North African airport contract, all glamour and prestige, and sure profit. And all we get is sand in our faces. Well, if I were to say that everything's been splendid, I'd be misleading you. Oh, yes, you bloody well would. It's extremely involved. We'll do our damnedest to follow. We have the time. I haven't. Not today. Then make it. I see no reason. I see 300,000 reasons. Mm. You're a pessimist, Billy. If it's a question of the director in charge of the project, Billy, I'm sure Ken wouldn't stand in the way. Oh, I'm not handing over to anyone. I'll be ready to talk about it tomorrow. That is too bloody late. Pity. Kenneth, are we to take it that there may be some truth in Mr. Straker's figures that we might sustain a loss? You seem to want to. <laughs> you know, you uh, should have put him in the regular army cast or bought him a toy shop to run. John, I think we'd better settle this now. Boy's right. Tomorrow will do. If this is still Bly's Cass, it's got to be settled now. It hasn't got to be settled any time. But tomorrow will do. Bly's will last overnight, Mr. Straker. You have my word for that. Now, Don and I have some other business to attend to. Uh, all right, uh, John, we'll, uh, we'll, 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 we'll talk about it tomorrow. Go on, Billy. Yes, he's taken to driving himself lately. Oh. So I've noticed. Gordon Revish to the party? Don't tell me you've got your eye on him now. No, not one, not even two. I nearly thought Bob Gillingham might... Might what? Have his eye on Sir Gordon. The late. I wonder whose alarm didn't go off. Is it saw Don's? Ten to one it was Don's. I'll drive you to the office if you like. I'll wait. Bob Gillingham's companies do have Sir Gordon as their banker. Ex-companies. Now he's permanent chairman of the export board. He's not allowed to indulge. And if he were fired? Well, we all know where, he, where he'd home to. As it is, it rather looks as if it's either you or Caswell for the bullet from the board. And if this party's meant for you to impress the minister and Bob Gillingham... Oh, don't worry about the motivation. Just send out the invitation. With Sir Gordon or without? Without. Well, it's your party. Yes, it is. Look, shall I, um, shall I ring Don and find whether it's the alarm clock or the car that didn't go wrong, uh, or just him? It's no use. He'll have left. His wife's got flu or something.
Who else besides Bob Gillingham shall I invite from the board? Ask Kemp. He was weaned on protocol at the Treasury. Good morning. Good morning, Donald. What kept you? I did. Don, you look cold and breakfastless. Oh, morning, Pamela. I am regrettably both. Don, I was so sorry to hear about poor Pat. I do hope she'll soon be up and about. Oh, yes, it was nothing serious. Hello, Don. Is he still...? We call it the In and Out Club. Oh, John! You could have given it to poor old Donald. We're late. <laughs> Agnes? I think I'll go to town after all. I do not ask to know if he's a gambler, Miss Weldon, or the size of his taxable income. I merely wonder, in the interest of the board, whether you can throw light on his attitude to our need of extra powers here to call for persons and papers. And I don't know. Or are you pleading your version of the Fifth Amendment? Sir John's views on this matter may be important. As those of a member appointed by the minister, they should be. Indeed. Like those of Mr. Bly, who outside serves the same company. You mean the one who is opposed to compulsory powers is the one most likely to be removed? Suppose they're both against, or both for? The permanent officials should have some say in the composition of the board, Miss Weldon. Though in the past, the secretariat appears to have been singularly diffident, content to... Uh, how does it go? to do good by stealth and blush to find it fame. The one I remember runs bashful dogs get little meat, bravely takes their proper seat. <laughs> Same thing, only canine. You didn't answer my question, did you? Members' private views are private. Not members, Miss Weldon, just one. And I don't know his either. Come now, you should. We are not back to the Official Secrets Act nonsense, are we? Unhappily. I thought security was satisfied. Mm. Security are never satisfied. They've been on to you? No. You to them. I'm sorry your opinion of me is such that you can suggest that. I'm not one of your contemporary Puritans, Miss Weldon. Lady civil servants can dispose their favours wherever, and the males of our service can share the couch with dames from the birthday honours list, for all I care, the dames permitting. I make only one other condition. Such relationships must not hinder the work of my department. And knowing Sir John's views on compulsory powers would enhance it, or you, personally? Would Sir John mind very much? You could ask him yourself. Yes, Sefton Kemp. Who? No, by all means, put her on. Good morning, Lady Wilder. Caswell will have to catch up when he arrives. Perhaps you might start by saying where this figure of £600,000 possible loss comes from. It's an authentic estimate based on sound information. Not just rumour. Well, you should know that. It's your project. Ours? Yours. All right, 51% ours, 49 yours. And you're in charge. You were the one who negotiated with those bastards. Now anyone else after five minutes would have known what they were up to. We built them an airport for three million. Our profit, 600,000 between us. They know our profit and approve. We sign a fixed price tender. Then they start whittling it down until we are doing them a favor. Well, I hardly blame Kenneth for not predicting the revenue raising tactics of Arab politicians. Ours are slippery enough. Now, oh, come in, Caswell. We're discussing the increased costs in North Africa. Oh, yes, yes. This project is a bit sick, isn't it? Ken, the extra import duty is hardly liable to prove catastrophic. But that's not all. No, not by a bloody long talk. Oh, I suppose he never mentioned the way leave snag. Ah, oh, right away, never mind politicians' tricks. He did the recce, he made the deal. And he made it knowing that our only road to the site leads through two leaders' territories. And now they won't let us cross from one to another. No, it's not as if they've just, uh, you know, suddenly let it fall. They've been feuding for years. And now we've got to build them a, a road. Maybe they wanted a road, probably did and saw a way of having us lay it for them, Bakshi. May I see that? Do we have to build them a road or don't we? Now, just answer me that. Well, I've spent a lot of time now, on this. Now, you see. And we very likely won't have to build a road. <laughs> oh, nothing daunts him, does it? Mistakes all the way. I should have listened to Frank Omrod. Oh, it's no use saying you didn't offer him a partnership first. When Frank knew he was on the job, he said, Billy, watch out. You'll lose your shirt and your false teeth. 
Well, I have been doing my sums. Have you done yours? Not in detail. Billy, tell them what we've agreed. I want to buy out now. Something better come up. Nothing could be worse as long as you weren't involved. Phew. What if we took Kenneth off the project? It's too late. My mind's made up. 75,000, I'm offering. Leaving us, if you're right, with over 200,000 pounds of your loss. Sir, so if you're right, and I don't admit that you are, you escape losing only what you've already put in, plus 75,000. We've got Bly's good name to think of. And I have mine. I do not run charities. It's still a Bly project. If uh, Billy made it a hundred thousand. Agreed. Double it. <laughs> Somebody should tell him cash, you know, they really should. My proposals for buying out? We shall have to study them. You said they go through on the nod? We do nod sometimes, Mr. Straker, but not with figures of that size. Make it two hundred thousand. I'll nod. Actually. Someone had to be chairman. Still as modest. And obviously still as much a slave to public relations. Uh -huh. I suppose as a wife of a member of the National Exports Board, I really ought to drive with you. With a Union Jack on the bonnet and a patriotic slogan in the rear window. No one would want to spoil your fun, Pamela. <laughs> Don't you believe it, kind sir? But jo John is surprisingly permissive in some ways. And I did give him fair warning. And he approved? Well, he said, do as you like. You would have anyway. I didn't know you was here this morning. Oh, yes, no. And if I am again, I promise I'll bring the mini. Good day, Mr. Straker. The sooner the better, Wilder, that's all. Yes. Now, the ears are part. His PA is a spaniel. Would you like a drink, Kenneth? Um, usual, thanks. They're one of the trademarks of tycoonery, like Rolls Royces and Henry Clay's, and dinner at number 10 with socialist prime ministers. What are? Two-legged spaniels. I'll have mine neat. Yes, I was thinking of sending out for some dog biscuits. Do you fancy some dog? No, thank you. And not when I'm smoking. Talking about man's cruelty to man, Kenneth, I thought you took that off very well. Oh, good. You can put it in my end-of-term report. Too well, for one who isn't leather-skinned. Perhaps you'd better leave us, Don. Oh, stay on my account, if Master doesn't mind. It was you I was thinking about. Don't go, Don. Are you used to being torn apart like that without any complaint by a man like Straker? Why should his plight worry me? That's just it. You took all that, and yet you loathe his guts. No. He doesn't bring a lump to my throat, either. Why did you let him buy out? At a price. Oh, you were just negotiating. He'll pay. He can afford to. I'd make it a quarter of a million. You asked 200,000. Mm, and he spat in my face. So we can raise it. We could uh, transfer control of the project. To you. Or Don. You shouldn't underestimate Don. I never have. Well, thanks for the pats on the head. But I'm not ready yet. It'll be like learning to fly on a VC-10. 
Or we could take into account Bly's reputation for straight dealing. And we... <laughs> <laughs> that amuses you. What I said or the fact that I said it? Both. You mean Bly's hasn't that reputation? And you usually are not a hypocrite. No, I won't elaborate. In this age of public relations, reputation is no mirror of past performance. But the past is past. But let's put it another way. We could appear generous in an adversity and allow him to dissolve the consortium for his compensation figure of £100,000. Loose change. It uh, might, in the long run, be advisable. For whom? For you? For father, maybe? Both on the NEB. Mm, too involved in its proceedings, if I may say so, to know what's going on here, but that's by the way. No, you both have your personal images to think of, I know. I've only Bly's. Kenneth, I have no intention of letting Straker off lightly. Even if your father does, and I don't know why he does. Perhaps Don had better leave. Sorry, Don. Mm. That's all right. I'm due at Crafts anyway. I don't know, John, that I'm being sensible or that you're entitled. Well, being cautious, we're both on the same side. Are we? I thought so. They've known each other for years, John, Straker and my father. They were partners during the war, building airfields. Patriots both. They worked on a cost-plus basis, with the clerk of works fixed. Have another. They made a fortune apiece, claiming they used more materials than they did. Bly's was made by the war, John. And by your father? Mm -mm -mm. More by the war. Must have been so bloody dead easy. Who do you say was the clerk of works? Oh, I didn't. No, he's an old man living in retirement now, with his memories. Does Straker remember? Every visit to the bank. But in your own interest, John, you should know that Straker is an old friend, not only of father's, but also of your new chairman of the export board, Bob Gillingham. They work together on the Association of British Industrialists. So I suppose it calls for some circumspection on your part. I look forward to your views, John. Miss Lingard. Yes, sir, John. Get me the National Export Board. I want Miss Weldon. Since your conscience bothers you about taking over the North Africa project, you might employ yourself more gainfully by looking into the war effort of Bly Construction Limited, with particular reference to the building of airfields and the clerks of works employed thereon. The bulldog days. No, the hyena years. I should consult him. But didn't give you license to go swanning all over Whitehall like some fashion model disrupting Australia. Well, I'm no good at travelling incognito. Was there anybody who didn't see you? You know, your Mr. Kemp is a show-off and a bit of an impresario. He's still capable of making something of it. Yes, I think you're right. You know, he's the only man I know who makes administration a substitute for sex. He's only interested in power. Well, that's what I said. You know, what you really mean is wives keep out. I would only hope that nobody thought you were down there snooping on me. You make it sound like a bunny club. Which, with Mr. Kemp's guidance, you found it wasn't. I did bump into Miss Weldon. How is Dom's wife? Whatever it is, she'll get over it. Oh, that uh, 
party list. Do you want to see it? No, just add Billy Straker to it. Who's he? Another guest. He's a big name in civil engineering. Married or floating? When you invite him, tell him the minister is coming too. It's short notice. But he'll drop everything to rub shoulders with privilege. He probably is married. You better ask Don. He'll find out. I don't know what's keeping Don today. I told him not to come. Excused on compassionate grounds? Something like that. But not exactly like that. No, not exactly. <laughs> Very, very clever, John. No, no. Not clever. She went to see Kemp out of bravado. Oh, curiosity. Bravado. And that wasn't Kemp's reason when he called me in. He thought he'd embarrass me. But he didn't. A little at first. After that, he was on the defensive. Good for you. Not me, John. Pamela. It was Pamela game, set and match. She was onto his weaknesses in no time. Mine too, probably. She sensed his vanity, his ambition, and the fact that he would remove anyone from his department capable of doing his job. And then she kept on telling him that you told her you considered me absolutely essential to the efficient running of the board and that without me it would be a shambles. Did she? But didn't you? Not that I recall. Not that he needed a spur. He more or less told me yesterday that he'd revive the old security threat unless I told him exactly where you stand on compulsory powers for the board. More or less? No. There was no ambiguity. Let me assure him. Tell him I'm on his side. And Pamela's invitation. I'll find some convincing excuse. No, no, no. You'll accept. You'll come. To be out jeweled and outdressed and tongue tied by protocol. Bissett, we want to go to Mayfair first. To Guillard's, the Couturier. It's not my world, John. But it's not theirs either, is it? Will she become a dame, do you think? With respect, Pamela, she's quite one already. Oh, I meant one of those WVS Red Cross dames, only civil service. She's a bit young for it. <laughs> With many a promotion and honours lists ahead. Isn't it maddening? What's that? Well, that a brilliant young e economist can look like that. Miss Weldon, I'm eaten up with envy. Thank you. Paris? Where is he? Well, French. It's by Guillard. You're very perceptive. Small world. Hmm. Well, Pamela has plenty of time to keep abreast of these things. If you'll excuse me. You know, I never understand why he even tries to socialize. He's custom built for work. Come on, meet somebody. If we'd known that they were Billy's messages being sent in to plague you and Caswell the other morning, John, we'd have put a stop on them. They never put a stop to us. Yes, well, they did the trick. I was just telling the minister and Bob that in three days we have settled an intercompany dispute that some firms would have gone on for months. You, know? <laughs> you must tell us how it's done, Wilder. Uh, an example to industry. Good sense and goodwill, that's all, miss. Uh, especially Mr. Straker was telling us on your part, personally. Well, it's very easy to dissolve a partnership which one hasn't founded. But the country in which you were working, Sir John, isn't this sort of thing rather damaging to British industry's image, though? The country in which we are working. You're going on. Blythe, I mean. Uh, on your own. Naturally. The day will come when every big European civil engineering firm will be queuing up to go into partnership with us. Minority, of course. <laughs> Excuse me. It was a bit much, though, even for John asking her. He didn't. I did. He did the decorations. They're real. And paid for. Caswell! I invited him, too. But I thought he was. You and John both. But why? The executioner's wife. And dinner has more dignity than a hearty breakfast. Oh, he's not for the chop for a long time yet. Well, I've been wrong before. Just watch our master's face when he spots him. <laughs>
Well, you beat Ken to it anyway. I always do, John. I like Wilder's ideas. He was telling me earlier the export board should be increased to 15 members. Now, if that had come from a civil servant, one would think of Parkinson's law. Not with a cost-conscious chap like Wilder, though. No, Minister. Did he suggest, Minister, why our present nine are not enough? Overwhelmed with committee work. Good point. He quite possibly sees that any such expansion would give us five industrialist members of the board instead of the present three. Uh, that, he might have thought, could take the edge off our problem of having two members from Blythe. And he'd be right, Bob. It could. Well, you look after Caswell. You know more people here than we do. Ken, what the hell are you up to? Good evening, John. You look more ready for a meeting than a party. Well, no, I'm in the mood for both. Well, get rid of that damn thing. Well, it's something you should see. Oh. Straker looks happy. One might even say smug. Thank you. Hmm? All right. Let's talk. Hey, I'm Lady Wilder. I'm sorry, Pamela. I was just going to. Have you a were word going with... to conspire, or are you secretly the James Bond of the Inland Revenue? Gannon. Look, um... if you're not out in one hour, I shall dial 999. Right. Well, what you is see it? this? Make a summary of them. Well, they're a forward look. Detail and accurate at our North Africa airport project. That's all settled. And Straker has signed. Yes, I know. You know, you could have squeezed him for half as much again. I would have, for his slant is on me. Don't be so thin-skinned. I hope he's not. When he finds out we're still going to make 600,000 profit in North Africa, seven, counting the compensation he's paying us. Poppycock. Well, see for yourself. We pay no increased import duties. I have the minister's special dispensation. And as for the road, there's another available. Shorter, more profitable. I reckoned it myself. You could have told us all this. Yes, John, I could have. Well, I hope you haven't made too much of an ass of yourself. Letting Straker off the hook to suck up to Gillingham, your export board chairman and his friend. Our shareholders might not take it too kindly. Oi, this is a party. Oops, sorry. You're lowering, John. Mm. Frowning with menace. And you could have put up this whole story. I didn't invent those snags, John. They were real enough. But you made sure that Straker knew about them. I could have, yes. And you delayed your flight home in Rome in order to let it germinate to let nature take its course. You are learning, aren't you? <laughs> well, come on. It's supposed to be a party, isn't it? <laughs>